Hi guys, Thierry Rocks here. Today, bringing you a new album review. I haven't done them in a while. Took a little bit of a break. Been busy. Um, and I noticed that, um, you know, my Breaking Benjamin review did really well initially, but kind of fell off in views. So that was kind of a shame. But, you know, I'm not going to let that bother me. And I'm still going to make the reviews because, well, you know, they make me happy. It's like the little things that matter the most. Today's review will not be of a new metal, alt metal or post grunge type album. It'll be a little bit different. Today, like my t-shirt suggests, we will be reviewing the album Out of Nothing by Embrace. Now, just a heads up, since this album isn't in the realm of what I usually review, you can, you know, feel free to skip this video if you don't find it interesting. You know, if you still like my content and you want to watch anyway, I appreciate that. But just letting you know, this uh, this band album review uh, will be a little bit different. Be a slightly different vibe than usual. If you're not interested in, I would want to say, the post-Britpop, Britpop, soft, like, alternative rock era and music... Uh, bands such as Keen, Coldplay, Snow Patrol, uh, you might not really get much out of uh, this video because I'm going to be praising and showing my love for that type of music. It's probably like my other most favourite genre, just a heads up. Now Embrace, I'm going to be reviewing them today because I recently saw them with my lovely partner. It was a great time, honestly, and there was other similar bands from the time like Ash and Ocean Colour Scene, who opened up for them, they were really great as well. You know, I know Ash very well from the Gran Turismo series of games. But yeah, primarily went for Embrace because uh, this year, 2024, they were celebrating 20 years of their biggest like album, like without a doubt their most popular release with their biggest hits on it. I also got this very nice tour t-shirt got it in white it's a little bit blank looking since it's just the red square with the logo and on the back of it if you can see is uh where the venue was and the date uh kirkstall abbey in leeds who are embrace well i'm gonna go into a little bit of history of the band i won't take too long embrace were formed in 1990 but as far as i know i can't really find very much information on their early career other than some paragraphs on wikipedia basically saying that they had a bunch of different band names uh but they eventually settled on embrace uh which is uh, the same name as the american hardcore punk or emotional hardcore band of the same name their lineup consists of their singer danny mcnamara and his brother richard mcnamara on guitar and you also have you also have mickey dale on keyboards and pianos obviously and you have Steve Firth on bass, and finally drummer Mike Heaton. Which as far as I know, these guys were like the permanent lineup, which is like, you don't get that with many bands. So really, I have to give them props for just like, you know, loyalty. Embrace mostly became relevant around 1997, which was like, I would say like the peak Britpop era, but when it was like just coming to an end, so obviously Oasis were like the big boys of uh, Britpop. They were huge in the mid 90s. They but their third album Be Here Now was considered a bit quite a disappointment at the time for various reasons. I still really like the album, but it's very flawed. Uh, Blur had pretty much like moved on from Britpop and released Song 2 off their self-titled album, which ended up being their biggest song ever and their only popular song in the US. And of course, Radiohead ended up doing OK Computer, which is like, you know, music nerds, like, favourite album. I do really enjoy it, but like, I really can't get into anything Radiohead made after that one. And obviously the same year, uh, Embrace were actually starting to release music. They actually released like three big singles a whole year before the release of their first album, which... All things aside, that was a massive power move because it meant like you had a bunch of big hits during that massive time for music when it was like, you know, the Britpop scene was still huge even if like the big players were like changing styles 
Um, but I have to give Embrace that. That was actually a really good idea. But yeah, they released their first three big songs, and then a year later, in 1998, they released their big debut, The Goodwill Out. That is quite a funny title. Like, I don't, I don't know why they didn't call it The Good Will Come Out, but who knows, and you know, it's actually quite iconic. But yeah, this debut, it was really big for the band, you know, Oasis kind of did be, you know, be here now, and it kind of was a bit of a letdown to a lot of people, and you had this new band, you know, called Embrace, a similar, you know, Britpop, you know, one word band, whereas uh, Manchester had Oasis, Leeds had Embrace, so you have that other really big, like, northern city, you know, representing them. So yeah, it was a really popular album, I'm pretty sure, like, in the UK, it did go, like, platinum eventually, I believe it sold gold in, like, the first week or two, uh, you know, back in the days when, you know, CD and just, like, cassette sales were, like, at their peak. But their follow-up, Drawn From Memory, released in 2000, was, in terms of sale numbers, was actually quite disappointing, but it does seem that, like, um, most fans really love the album, and it got good reviews by critics, and I have to straight up say something, I'm very torn between, like, this and, obviously, Out of Nothing being my favourite album. Drawn From Memory is amazing. The Goodwill Art was very, like, Britpop, going into post-Britpop, where you would have bands like Travis and, uh, you know, Snow Patrol pop up, but Drawn From Memory has a bit of a, a funk rock vibe, uh, very different like instruments, but as well as that, it has some of the band's most absolutely like heart-wrenching ballads. I will definitely decide to review that if people want it, because it's a highly underrated album. Then the band, you know, a little band known as Coldplay would eventually get popular, and they kind of took over, you know, Embrace's kind of like relevance in a lot of ways, and then Embrace did another album, which just was a bit of a disappointment, really. And the band were in the phase of breaking up, you know, or like having to change labels due to low sales. But a miracle happened. Chris Martin of Coldplay offered to give them their song because they thought it suited Embrace better. And then they would release their massive comeback out of nothing released in September of 2004. I'm going to show the uh, CD quickly and the artwork. Uh, out of nothing, it really has this focus on like red and white. They were really going for the red colour scheme. You have the uh, the five members of Embrace huddled together in what looks like to be like the shape of a star. That's the spine over there and the back of it as well is just plain red with, you know, the track list on it. It's very plain but I just really enjoy the aesthetic of it. And the sticker, I got this from, uh, I got this from British Art Foundation for a pound a couple years ago. Ooh, QR code. But yeah, but yeah, you have the bright red disc in the middle there. And there's several pictures in the, in the liner notes of the lyrics with close-ups of the band members' faces. But let's just say my hairstyle is very <laughs> inspired by these guys. The shaggy long hair kind of look. Very popular in 2004 and five. So I'm bringing it back. But without further ado, let's finally get into the album itself. Track number one is absolute iconic tune, Ashes. Now the previous three Embrace albums before this one had very sort of like, kind of like slow burner, atmospheric, you know, introductions. I mean, The Goodwill Out had like a short intro and then it led into kind of like, um, you know, the powerful, all oh, you good, good people. But the two after that had very sort of slow burner intros. Ashes just straight up goes into it. It goes straight into it straight away. You see, hear those kind of like melodic guitars. But yeah, and it constantly has, the beat of this song is a constant on like the on the bass pedals of the drum kit just constant beat it's like a dance beat honestly this song if i could describe it it's just uplifting it makes you feel alive like honestly like a gem on a cold face start again and then you get the chorus so watch me rise up with me all the ashes you made lie with me and you said that we were wrong Life goes on. Yeah, this this chorus is just infectious. You can clearly tell they wrote it to get the crowd absolutely wild. It's anthemic. 
it's it's powerful it's uplifting uh the song itself i think is about like what happens like after you've been through uh, a pretty like terrible experience and kind of like the come down effect of that you know and getting back up you know getting back on your feet and trying again knowing it's like not the end of the world and everything and just just feeling epic that's how i would describe this song but yeah i also love as well when the the dance beat drums actually kind of transition into a like and the song like slows down and you can hear the lyrics i sink like a stone i've lost my control like it's like the song the vibe of the song changes to like a completely different like verse in the outro and i really like that i enjoy that but ashes is amazing it's probably their like second biggest hit that they ever did and i actually heard this song even before i knew who the band were and obviously the reason i know of embrace is because of my auntie you know my late auntie introduced me to them and you know i'm forever grateful for her showing me such an amazing band but yeah i've heard ashes before on the radio like several years before listening to the full album and yeah another fun fact as well is that this song featured in fifa 06 great way to start this amazing album track number two is gravity now this song is very special like i said chris martin of coldplay actually wrote the song but they were pretty much like well to be honest i think that this song would ins would would suit embrace a lot better which remember they actually came before coldplay which you know is quite crazy to think about but yeah honestly i'm super glad that this song was made even though they themselves didn't write it it's technically a cover i guess but it pretty much like saved the band's career from when they were kind of like becoming a bit irrelevant this one just shot up and absolutely i think it became number one on the charts uh but it got it was really popular it's uh it's a lovely ballad starts with absolutely beautiful pianos then the drums kick in and the verses are just like iconic honey it's been a long time going and i can't stop now yeah and then the chorus and i look up at the sun and i can see all the way that gravity turns for you and me what can i say this song it's a it's a love song shows you that like you know <laughs> that you know no matter what that person who you really love you will be there for each other and you can like get through anything you know no matter what it's a very cutesy song and i'll actually say i, I do prefer embrace's version over the coldplay one which like that one was only released on the song talk which was a single off of x and y that one is a lot more depressing and slow sounding uh it pretty much turns the song into like a slow ballad whilst I would say Gravity is more of a power ballad, it's very uplifting, the Coldplay one is just a little bit sad. It's very similar to their song Fix You, if I'm honest. But yeah, Gravity is iconic, it also has like a great like short but sweet like guitar solo as well. It's just so lovely. And maybe some people would argue it might be overplayed, but it's a great song and it helped the band, you know, gain a new audience in a lot of ways. Like people like me and later friends this was the song that introduced me to them i mean the first time i heard it was in um in the spin-off series of uh, mike bassett with uh, ricky tomlinson there was a uh, there was the movie and then they did a um a one series show with gravity as the theme song but yeah moving on we're gonna get to track number three which is someday i do have to say this is one of my least favorite songs on the album i don't really listen to it very much um, but I do think the opening strong. Someday you'll see things my way. I would describe this song as uh, a bit like a gospel in the vibe that it has. It's uh, very chilled out, very, very relaxed. There's a choir singing in the background, which really does kind of give it that, um, you know, church gospel kind of vibe. Um, and even that, even though like Embrace themselves aren't Christian, I do think these songs kind of have some. Uh, slight religious connotations to them but some days definitely like that i just don't think it's as catchy as some of the other songs on this album unfortunately but it's just my opinion the next song track four is another single looking as you are uh this was a single a year after the album released in 2005 
uh, looking as you are. It's another similar sort of like power ballad type thing which the band are great at doing. But yeah, I really love like the first lyric. You know, it mentions like the devil and the deep blue sea and things like that. I love the chorus. Looking as you are, looking as you are. It's like those falsetto type vocals which were very popular with these style of bands. You know, obviously Coldplay, Keen as well. I love like, um, I, I love the uh, middle section of the song as well. And I know that the world's not changing for you know me. I love that bit too. It's like it kind of like goes into sort of a more dramatic kind of feel with that bit. But yeah, this song, it's very, uh, the guitars are very pretty sounding as well. But yeah, this is a very cute song. I like it. I, I, I love this song. Even if I think Ashes and Gravity are stronger. Now we're on to track five. I'm going to straight up say it. This song is probably my favorite Embrace song. It is very hard to like decide. I have a, quite a few that are my favorites. Like on this album and off this one. But that song is Wish Em All Away. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to this song this year. Through my anxiety like attacks and panic attacks this song has just kept me just it's just comforted me but wish him all the way it starts off with a guitar and then you actually hear a unique instrument you hear a harmonica and the snare tone on this album as well also has a really nice on it too. Then the drums stop on the verses. Stars are wearing in the sky. I've got the last of my life. Like a sleeping army, I will wait. Then the drums kick back in. And then the pre chorus to the chorus are absolutely incredible. So you have nothing to face. Close your eyes and wish them all. Wish them all. Wish them all. Wish them all, all away. And everything will change. It's just absolutely just, and then it goes so smoothly back into the harmonica again. But yeah, this song is about um, this song is about protecting somebody that you love, or you know, feel you know you feel like they're in danger, and you need to like look after them and save their life. Really, it's like telling them you know like you know close your eyes and wish them all away. Because even even sometimes that's that's sometimes the best thing we can do is just try to stay in the um, try to stay in the positive, you know, thinking. But yeah, I really love this song. It's incredibly heartfelt. It also gives me. It's probably the song that gives me the strongest Oasis vibes. Especially Danny's voice sounds very similar to Noel Gallagher's. Uh, very inspired by Noel. But you know, I love that anyway. I, I love both singers, so it's fine. I love the middle of the song. Now you don't need to fight to stand in a line. You know that bit. The song goes a bit rockier. That's also why I really love this album. Is that like it's actually quite rocky. I wouldn't say like like hard rock, but it is like you can vibe to it and like find it powerful. But yeah, I love this song. And I love the guitar reverb at the end of it as well, like the guitar distortion. This song is fantastic. I was so happy to see them play it live, you know, playing the entire Out of Nothing album. So yeah, this song is amazing. The next song, track number six, is Keeping. Now, this is one of their more like, um, probably one of the lesser known uh, songs on this album. I don't really think they play it live very much, but obviously they did recently. But yeah. I do like this song, the intro guitars of it sound like their previous album, If You've Never Been, which was a very like sleepy, slow album, um, you know, but that's not dissing the song, I'm just saying it's, you can kind of hear it sounds like that one. I really love the intro. Keeping me up and my feet off the ground. And then the chorus, like a tidal wave that never goes. You know, Danny's voice does that kind of like um, high to low kind of note thing and I really do enjoy that. Um, this song it's not as like memorable as some of like the more singles on the album but it's still like a nice pleasant little song. Uh, it makes me nostalgic listening to it. I think I would have really loved it as a kid. Track 7 is Spell It Out. This song's a bit different. The drumming, the pace of the drums is a bit slower. Like that kind of like drum beat. But yeah. This, the chorus of this one. So everyone can see 
If you spell it out for me, then you see So everyone can see But yeah, this song's pretty decent It's not really one that I listen to that much And I don't think the, the band plays it live um, All that much But it does have very like uh, pretty sounding guitars on it It's very peaceful and relaxing Like a lot of the songs on this album are But it's not my favourite And you know, that's okay Like I said, there's not a single bad song on this album, I'd say So, you know that's really great. Track number eight is another single on the album, which uh, for some reason wasn't as popular as Ashes and Gravity, but this one is A Glorious Day, which is just, this song is just gorgeous. It's heavenly sounding. Just those gentle piano keys at the beginning. The verses, who can say the things so pure to blow me away? And you came along on a glorious day, and I want you to save me again. And also, it it does these kind of like um, I guess you would call them kind of like a cappella vocals. You know, it goes oh oh oh. And then it goes into the verses and the drums kick in and it goes back into the chorus and you came along on a glorious day by the time that you left I was crawling again but yeah this song as well is just you know saved me from a lot of like terrible anxiety moments I also love the midsection of the song back then I had it all and now I want it back that's all it like slows down but then it just goes so cleanly back into the into the verses and the choruses this song is amazing i absolutely love it and overall the song is about you know like i said um somebody really special in your life who just comes to your aid right when things seem at their worst and they pretty much save your life it's probably, other than Wish Them All Away, it's probably my second favourite song off the album, like, easily. A Glorious Day. Fantastic. What else can I say? Track number nine is Near Life. Now, this song is unlike any other song on the album. The others have kind of been, like, you know, ballad-type songs, or, like, power ballads, you know. This song is actually a progressive rock song, believe it or not. It doesn't have like a standard chorus, uh, Danny's vocals are less melodic on this song, uh, there are a lot more kind of like, he kind of talks his way through the verses, you know, the lyrics as well, he works in mysterious ways, this song also makes me think of like, you know, I don't know, maybe God, some, some higher force that we don't know of, it's interesting, it's probably the heaviest song on the album, it really does give me the vibe of like, uh, maybe not vocals wise, but instrumental wise bands like, uh, you know, uh, Pink Floyd, you know, 70s, like prog rock vibes. It feels like a journey, this song. You can like just lie on your bed, like listening to it in your headphones and get a little lost. Very unique considering, you know, the band doesn't usually do that. The final track on the album is the title track, Out of Nothing. This song is just, oh, it is haunting, this song very very slow paced very atmospheric song it starts off with some very like low piano keys very much makes me think of uh, the scientist by coldplay if i could compare it to a song i also really like how the verse starts off with the with the title out of nothing you came to me mm -hmm. and the i guess you would call it the chorus i said goodbye it's very like feels like the ending to something and you think it's going to be like a sad ballad but then the middle of the song the drums kick in and it just gets powerful i can't believe it's come to this na, 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 na. I was so happy to hear this song live and all the lights flashing when the song got more powerful. It's very reminiscent as well of uh, the song Everything by by the Canadian Christian rock band Lifehouse, which are similar kind of band to Embrace, honestly. 
This song is beautiful. I love how it ends with like guitar distortion. It kind of makes it a little bit more experimental than your standard kind of like pop rock kind of affair. You know, soft rock, alternative rock. Makes it a little bit different. So yeah, Out of Nothing is a perfect ending to the album. It makes it feel like you've been through a journey. And that's really what I think a good album should do, which I, the, the art of albums are kind of lost nowadays because making hit singles is a lot more important with streaming and such. But yeah, there we go. That was Out of Nothing by Embrace. What did I think about it? I love this album. I think it's right up there with some of the some of the other best albums in those bands, similar bands to them, you know, like A Rush of Blood to the Head by Coldplay, Hopes and Fears by Keen, you know, Eyes Open by Snow Patrol, which obviously has chasing cars on it. You can kind of tell how, like, this album, it kind of, like, went back to basics. Uh, the title also being very similar. It went back to the more rockier, mixed with ballads kind of vibe that um, The Goodwill Out had. This album pretty much, like, takes it back to basics, but kind of, like, takes what was in their contemporaries, you know, like, since Coldplay were getting big, that was obviously a big influence on this sound. Uh, if there was, if I could describe this album in one word, it would be sweet. These these songs, you can literally like, you can sing them to the person you love, and you know, in general, you know, they're not just like radio filler songs, you know, that like you listen to in the background. They're songs that you can just really just, mm, absolutely just feel in your soul. But yeah, that was my review. And if you want me to do any more like similar album reviews in this sort of genre, you know, do let me know. And I would love to review some more um, of Embrace's albums in the future. This style of music was my childhood. And like, I'll always, I'll always love it for that reason. Just for being the soundtrack of my childhood. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. But let me know as well if you've got any other albums you wish to suggest in the comment section below. Thanks for watching guys. Peace. And have a good summer.